George, Catherine, and Webster were spending the afternoon at the city's new space museum. As they walked through the many rooms, they saw pictures of planets, spacesuits worn by our astronauts, and pieces of meteors that had landed on Earth. The most popular part of the museum was the section they were approaching now. George pointed toward it, telling Webster, "Hey, Webster, you'll love this next exhibit. It's a miniature space capsule you can sit in." Wow, that's far out! cried Webster as he pulled Catherine's hand excitedly. "It certainly is," replied Catherine as she hurried to keep up with Webster. Everyone wants to sit inside it, Webster. We'll have to wait at the end of the line. The line moved slowly, and as the minutes went by, Webster began to yawn. I wish this line would move faster. I want to sit inside the capsule and pretend I'm an astronaut. George grumbled. Well, at least you'll get a turn. I'm too big to fit into the capsule. Catherine chuckled. If all space aliens were as big as George, we wouldn't have to worry about an invasion. They wouldn't fit into their own flying saucers. George made a face and grunted. Very funny. Webster pointed at the capsule excitedly. Look, ma'am, the last kid is coming out. It's my turn at last. George lifted Webster into the capsule. Take your time, Webster. There's no one else waiting. Catherine and I will look around while you enjoy your trip into space. Webster snuggled into the command seat and put on the space helmet. The capsule was very comfortable. Webster yawned again. His eyes slowly fluttered, then closed. In seconds, Webster was sound asleep and beginning to dream. Warning sirens blared. The entire rocket began to shake. Smoke and flames poured out its exhaust as the countdown neared its end. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignite! The rocket's engines roared. Up, up, up into the sky rose the spacecraft. Soon it was free of Earth's gravity and traveling into space. Earth base to astronaut Webster. You are right on course. Watch out for meteor showers. Astronaut Webster answered the call. Why do I have to watch for meteor showers? I just took a bath before blast off. Earth Control explained. Meteor showers are huge rocks falling through space like rain. They could damage your capsule. Do you see the Milky Way ahead? Webster looked out a porthole in his capsule. No, but I sure could use a candy bar for a snack. I'm hungry. Suddenly, rocks thumped against the side of the capsule, startling Webster. Uh oh! I think I found one of those meteor showers you were talking about. I can't stay on course. I'm spinning out of control. Into deep. Dark, unexplored space spun Webster in his capsule. Comets whizzed past. Asteroids floated by. Suddenly, a large planet appeared ahead. Webster struggled with the capsule's controls. Oh no! I'm going to crash! The capsule came whistling out of space and entered the planet's gravity. In minutes, it splashed down in a muddy swamp. Webster let out a big sigh of relief. The landing was a little rough, but I'm okay. As for this planet, why it looks almost like Earth? I think I'll go out and take a look around. Webster opened the capsule and stepped out. Will you look at that? He exclaimed as he looked beyond the swamp. There's a giant garden with beautiful flowers as tall as buildings. Cassie would sure love this planet. I'll bring her home a flower as a souvenir. And Webster sloshed through the mud toward the flowers. Webster climbed out of the mud and onto dry land. He walked up to a big red flower and was about to pick it when he heard a buzz, buzz, buzzing sound. The buzzing got louder and louder 
until three huge alien bees flew up beside him in the garden. They were the strangest bees Webster had ever seen. He had bee bodies with human faces. Stop! Ordered the leader of the bees. I am Queen Bee, and I order you to stop. Webster blinked in amazement. The Queen Bee looked just like Cassie Parker, his neighbor. Who, who are you? Sputtered Webster. I am the ruler of this planet. Explained the Queen Bee. Picking flowers is against the law here. If everyone who landed picked a flower, soon there would be no flowers left. Webster apologized. I'm sorry, Queen Bee, ma'am. I didn't mean to break any laws. I was only taking it as a souvenir of my trip. You see, I crash landed and my capsule is damaged, so I can't take off. The Queen Bee smiled. Please accept a friendly welcome. First, you will have some honey with us. Then my bees will help you take off. Back at the Hive City, Webster enjoyed the Queen's hospitality. Then it was time for liftoff. Webster climbed back into his capsule. Several bees grabbed onto the capsule and flew it up into the sky. When it was high enough, Webster hit the thruster button. The engine jetted him into space. Webster was on his way again. Where? He did not know. My scanners are picking up something ahead. Webster said as he flew toward a giant asteroid. As he came closer, Webster saw through his porthole that the asteroid was covered by a giant plastic dome. Inside the dome were hundreds of spacecraft. Just then, a man crackled out of Webster's radio. Honest Jerry's, you sauce a lot. Stop in for the best buys in the galaxy. <laughs> Credit available. That sounds just like my friend Jerry from Earth. Webster said as he steered the capsule closer to the dome. Except that this Jerry is green and has big pointed ears. I don't think I care to land here. Deeper into unexplored space flew astronaut Webster. Tiny gleaming objects outside the capsule caught his eye. They must be UFOs, Webster said. Then he looked closer. They're not UFOs. They're old soda cans and pieces of metal and other junk. Someone sure has been littering. It looks like a garbage dump out there. Webster shook his head in dismay and sighed. Ah, oh, litter bugs are a problem, even in outer space. I wish people would dispose of litter properly before the entire universe becomes a trash heap. As the spacecraft traveled on, Webster was starting to become lonesome. With a great big sigh, he exclaimed, "I sure could use some company." Being an astronaut is exciting, but it's also very lonely. I wish I could go home. I miss my family and friends. Just then, a friendly voice boomed out of the capsule's radio receiver. Space Station Alpha to Capsule. This is TD George Seven One speaking. You are welcome to land and visit. Webster perked up. His TV scanners revealed a gigantic space station just ahead. Webster steered his craft towards the station and maneuvered into the docking bay. As Webster opened the hatch and popped out, two friendly alien robots were waiting for him. Webster couldn't believe his eyes. The robots looked just like Catherine and George. I am TV George Seven One. Said the silver male robot as he extended one metal arm to shake hands, while pointing his other metal arm to the robot beside him. 
And this pretty gold robot is my wife, K. Catherine Three. Webster shook hands with T. D. George Seven One and introduced himself. I'm Webster. No numbers, sir, and you look very familiar. K. Catherine Three chuckled. <laughs> T.D. George Seven One is a famous space ball player. He was an old galaxy captain for the Alpha Asteroids. T.D. George Seven One beeped and buzzed and turned a rusty red color. He was embarrassed. I don't play space ball anymore. I do something more important. Our station here recycles space trash. We have a ray that changes garbage into energy and stores it in special batteries. Come back to Earth with me," said Webster. "Garbage is one thing we have plenty of." K. Catherine Three bent closer to Webster. "Is Earth your home?" Webster nodded sadly. "Yes, ma'am. I wish I could go back there. My castle is damaged, and besides, I don't know the way." <laughs> K. Catherine Three hugged the little astronaut. We can help you, Webster. T. D. George Seven One and I will plot a course for Earth, and our fix-it android will repair your spacecraft and program you onto the right course. With that, T. D. George Seven One pressed a button on his chest. The button lit up, and a bell rang. Then a sliding panel in the wall behind Webster opened, and out scooted a little android with four arms. The fingers on its four hands were all shaped like tools. That's X Z Dan One Five, explained T D George Seven One, pointing at the android. I'll unclog your stuffed up nose cone, joked X Z Dan One Five as he began to work on Webster's capsule. Webster stared in awe. X Z Dan One Five looked exactly like Bill Parker, his neighbor. It didn't take the android long to make the repairs, and soon Webster was ready for his trip home. Have a safe flight," said K Catherine Three, as Webster climbed into the capsule. Just before he closed the capsule. K. Catherine Three reached in and handed Webster a tiny gold football on a chain. T. D. George Seven One wanted you to have this. It's an award he once won. Why, thanks, ma'am, and thank you, T. D. George Seven One. Called Webster as he closed the hatch and waved goodbye to his friends. He touched the booster button, and in an instant, Webster blasted off for Earth. It wasn't long before his homeworld was in sight. Good old Earth, it's great to be home. The capsule fell from the heavens and landed with a great splash in the ocean. As Webster opened the hatch, water sprayed on his face. People were cheering and calling his name. <laughs> To wake up," called Catherine as she gently shook her dozing astronaut. "It's time to leave. The museum is closing," added George as he dipped his fingers in a paper cup of water and flipped droplets on Webster's face. Slowly, Webster opened his eyes. "Ma'am, George, it's great to be home. I miss you." Catherine hugged Webster and helped him out of the capsule. We missed you too, she said, looking at George as if he could explain what Webster meant about missing them. Webster glanced at the paper cup in George's hand and reminded him. Be sure to throw that in the trash can. You wouldn't believe it, but litter is a big problem even in outer space. George nodded as if he understood. Even though he didn't, he tossed the cup in a trash receptacle and followed Webster and Catherine out of the museum. Now, where did Webster get that? George muttered as he glanced down and saw a tiny football dangling from a chain in Webster's hand. <laughs>